Testing, one, two, three. Hello, everyone. I hope you're uh, here with me now, joining me here on Facebook Live. And this evening we are going to be painting a uh, project called Fleurs de Paris. And let me get over here and so that I can see when your comments start coming up so that I know that I'm coming through and that you can hear me. Uh, so if you can hear me and see me, why let me know in the comments and that will help me because last time I forgot to turn my microphone on and so there was about 20 seconds where uh, you couldn't hear me. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to tonight and that you'll uh, let me know. So uh, if you're going to paint along tonight or if you aren't, uh, I hope you'll just enjoy this time. And I see, oh good, you can hear me. Forget the Yarnell. Um, uh, I can hear you, Carol Yarnell. <laughs> That's Jerry Yarnell. <laughs> He's in Oklahoma. I'm in Utah. So, but... If you're just going to uh, just watch this evening and just kind of join in our crazy bunch here that we always have when we have Zoom classes or my second Facebook Live, I'm glad you're here. And thank you so much for joining me. Uh, hi, Linda Stanton and Paula and Janet. Um, it's good to have you here this evening. Uh, oh, you know how it goes when you are typing in Facebook adds a last name. Okay, well, my maiden name used to be Yarling, so I guess that was kind of close <laughs> enough. But, uh, oh good, Laura, hello. And uh, I'm just so happy that all of you can come in and join. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of chit chat here for uh, a few minutes. Hello, Kim, so that folks can get on and uh, you can watch me with this fun uh, painting tonight. Hey, Marjean, you did it. Good for you up in Seattle there, up in Washington. And... Uh, like I said, this is my second time, and of course, with any of my Zoom classes or even this Facebook Live, you never really know what's going to happen. Uh, of course, I don't have you guys live here to uh, actually chime in with some of the little uh, things that you uh, always throw in, but still, I hope you'll enjoy your evening. And hi, Sharon. Uh, hi, Della. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad that you could join. Uh, thanks for having us, and I'm just glad that all of you can come. And so what I think I'll do while I'm waiting just a couple more minutes, I think I'll share with you uh, the project that is coming up this next week. It's my last uh, project before I go storm chasing. Uh, yes, for those of you who don't know me well, um, one of my passions besides mudding and painting is chasing tornadoes. And I'm leaving on May the 8th for the rest of the month to go and start out of Oklahoma City to chase storms with a bunch of folks that I've been chasing with since 2006. Hi there, Belinda, and she's saying howdy. And so, but we've got a project coming up next week, which is a mudding project. And let me show you what we're going to be doing. And you can take your pick of whichever uh, one of the surfaces that you would like to do. Uh, the vase originally came from uh, 
painter's paradise and they ran out of the vases. And so I thought, well, why not do a memory or jewelry box? Because wooden boxes are readily available to get anywhere. And so I adapted the design over to show you what a box would look like. And so I hope that you, if you're a mutter, you'll come and join us. This is next week. I believe it's on the, let me get my May calendar here. It's May 5th on next Thursday night. And it's at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you would like to join the class, of course, you can go to my website to register for the class. And when you register for a class of mine, that always includes the live class with uh, a video download that's an instructional video and, of course, a written e-packet. And if you have never mudded before and you've kind of had an interest to do that, this would be a great project to start, believe it or not, because we're going to start with the rows. And uh, everybody wants to learn to do the rows. And if you don't have a mud kit, you would need to go to margoclark.com and she has the mud kits available there. Everything comes in uh, one box, and that's all you need except a chalk pencil. So uh, this is what we're going to be doing next week on May the 5th. My gosh, I can't believe that it is May already. And uh, this year will soon be half over. Okay, so hi, Juliana, and uh, so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to get started with our project. If you're going to paint along with me, I hope that you have your background black, and uh, then we're going to be using uh, a variety of stencils, and the stencils that I use you can get practically anywhere and they don't even have to be exactly like what I am doing here. So let me bring up the the actual project that we're doing and um, oh I got these little guys at the Dollar Tree. They came in a package. I think there were six of them for a dollar and a quarter and we'll talk more about that later. But as you can see in this, all we've done is stencil across the top. I had uh, the lettering for that. And, um, okay, I have a bad echo. Okay, let me see. Let me just check here what I can do. Let's see, I think I'm going to mute my phone okay I'm not sure exactly why I have a bad echo I have everything turned off except is it still bad now okay let me let me see about turning this way all the way down. Okay, is that any better? Okay. Okay, it, does anybody else have a bad echo? Okay, I don't hear echo. Okay, so uh, Laura, it might be just yours. Hi, Kathy. And so... Um, like I said, you can use any of the stencils that you would like. And um, so what I've done, I already have this uh, painted. And actually what I d used, whenever you're doing something like this, 
If you don't have a T-square, you need to invest in one. And they're usually in the drafting areas because these are wonderful so that you don't have something running up and downhill. Hill. And as you can see, this one is well worn. But I came in and I marked where I needed to make sure that my line was straight there. And then I came down here for my little uh, flower here. And I know that I've got some little white chalk lines there that I put in with my trusty pastel chalk pencil. You can't paint or mud without one of these. And then I kind of marked below here, I'm just taking this one little uh, line here to put underneath here, if I have room. So I'm gonna do the stenciling first. And if you have ever stenciled and it runs underneath all of your uh, the stencil part, you're probably, one, using too much paint, and secondly, you're not using the right kind of um, stencil brush. And I use the Dynasty Stencil Pro. It's a half inch. I absolutely love it. Sandy McTeer uh, carries these, and you can get them from her. They're on her website, uh, sandymcteerdesigns.com. And I think right now she's having a sale on these. And if you put the coupon code, all capitals, A-R-T, art, you'll get a discount on them. So... Be sure you have your Dynasty uh, stencil brush. So I'm going to be using a silver color and a metallic, and I just need that much. I know <clears throat> you think maybe, oh, I need a bunch more, but I really don't. But what you do need, along with your brush, is uh, you need to have a dry paper towel. And so I'm just going to come and tap in and see how just little bit I have on my brush, hardly any at all. Then I'm going to go to my paper towel and I'm just going to kind of scrub it on there and rub a little bit of the excess off. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to start tapping. And also, if you have a narrow stencil like I have here, you could always put tape on both sides. And that would keep it from uh, going over the side. But see, I have just a scant amount of paint on there. And now I'm pouncing a little harder because I can feel that my paint's off of there, coming off. And let me see if I can see it better over here. And I'm just tapping along. And I'm looking to make sure that all these little crevices here are covered in. Once when I was doing uh, this part today, I got a little bit off the edge, and it was easy to correct it. I just came back and painted with a little uh, more of my background color. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So then all I'll have to do is just um, pull this up, if I can get my fingernail under there. Okay, and so there is the top of my stencil all ready. Now... I've got a dirty stencil. So what is the easiest way to clean it? Nothing other than hand sanitizer. How about that? Just with a clean paper towel, I'm gonna to put a little bit of hand sanitizer on there. 
can see that, and then come in and rub on here. And look, it's taking that paint right off. Easy peasy. Totally clean for the next time. And if you don't clean them right away, they dry and then they're even harder to uh, clean. So if you can't clean it right away, at least put it in a pan with water or something in it so that it will stay uh, moist until you can really get in there and paint and clean it. Okay, so now I'm going to come in here with my lettering and I'm going to line that up and we'll hope that it's straight. Okay, so once again, I've got my paper towel coming in, tapping in my silver, working it on my plate. Coming over here and just kind of getting rid of some of the excess. And I want to make sure that that looks straight. Okay, and then I'm going to just kind of rub this in. And because you have such a scant amount of paint on your brush, hopefully it doesn't go under. So there we go. Okay, and now I'm going to take this and let me see if I can get that lined up where I had my okay I'm gonna come a little bit this way okay and my I should have enough on there to do this so I'm gonna come in come across There we go. It's just, it's kind of up in there pretty close, but it'll be fine. So uh, now I can actually take, put a little bit of the hand sanitizer in the palm of my hand and I can clean my brush. See how that silver's coming out of there? Of course, you, you've got a nice silver palm, but that's all right. And then again, you would take your paper towel and keep getting that out. And then, of course, you'd want to go back and you would want to, uh, oh, I have one more to do. I forgot. Hold on a second. I have one more cur curl to do. And that is over in here. No problem. See, my brush is not wet now, so I can come in on, with my silver paint, come here to my paper towel. And let's bring this in. Now, see what I did here? This stencil was open pretty close here. I should have put a piece over that, too, but I think I can manage. And then, once again, just come in, go over your stencil. And there we go. So, easy, easy to clean uh, brushes and everything with our hand sanitizer and cleaning stencils. So I have those over laying in a pan now so that uh, I don't have to stop and clean them, but uh, they'll stay moist until I can really get to them. So now you would just simply come and take and put your uh, pattern down and this doesn't take much of a pattern but I always encourage you to uh, put the pattern 
on a piece of transparent paper because then you can move it around. And I know that's kind of hard to see, but there are um, the hydrangea uh, blossoms there, and you can see it a little better there where they are. And so um, we're going to be using, I'm going to be using a number four filbert. You can use any shape of brush you want to do the petals. I just like a filbert brush because as you can see here in this diagram, we're going to be coming in and a filbert always gives you a nice uh, little rounded edge on the outside. But if you use a flat brush or uh, any other kind, that's fine. You know, so many times people say, well, what brush are you using? Well, if you're new, it does help to have a suggestion about the brush. But you gals who've been painting for a long time, uh, you know what works for you. And so I would suggest, uh, and some people are heavy handed and some people have a light hand. So depending on that, you would need to decide the size of your brush. So to do the hydrangeas, I'm going to use, uh, this is kind of a medium violet color. It's violet pansy. This is light lavender and then white. And I'm using uh, folk art acrylics for this. And so this is going to be my darkest purple that I'm going to use because the black is going to be my shadows. And um, I'll just show you real quickly. Let me see if I can um, bring this in a little bit. Okay, that's better. And I'm going to start at, um, with this flower here because it is behind the other two. See, this one was done first, this one second, and then this one third. And of course, in any painting, you always start with your back element first. And you see down in here where my dark uh, violet pansy is going to be is because that's my shadow color. And the black in between the petals creates automatic shading for that. So I don't have to worry about shading anything back in here because the black background does it for me. So I'm going to start with, let me bring this over here. I'm just going to come in here and pick up uh, the color on both sides. And then I'm simply going to press down and lift, press down and lift. And you can put in three or four petals. It doesn't matter. And that's going to be your little, you could even put five in if you wanted. I don't like five because to me it looks too contrived. I, I prefer uh, three because then that kind of gives you, <clears throat> it looks like the rest of the petals might be behind another one. And that's what we're going for. So we're going to start right down in here, and I'm just going to work really quickly. You can usually do all three of those with one load of the brush. And another thing about hydrangeas, I don't know if you've ever painted one before, but start small. <laughs> hydrangeas have a tendency to grow and then you end up with these great big balls. And so it's best to uh, start small and you can always, it's easier to add than it is to take away. Now, of course, in this case, you could always use some black paint and uh, reduce the size of them. And see, in some instances, I'm just kind of tapping. See that? And I'm getting a reflection off the paint right now. That's why it looks so light on your uh, screen. 
but once it dries, it will be darker. So I'm going to come and come up a little farther with my dark. See, I'm just barely tapping. So, And you want to watch your edges also. In fact, if you feel like that you're going to really paint outside, go around and do some of your edges first so that you don't get carried away. And ask me why I suggest that. <laughs> because I have gotten carried away so many times. And also you want to have little, uh, you don't want to have a straight edge out here, but you want things to kind of go in and out, in and out. All right, so I've got all of those in there now. I'm not uh, washing my brush. I'm just coming in with my lavender, my, my second color. And if I feel like that it is getting too light for me, I'll just simply, come, let me see if I can get this over here, yeah. Uh, I'll come in with some uh, of the darker lavender and kind of go over it and just kind of have a dirty load of the two colors. Ooh, that sounds wicked, doesn't it? Dirty load. Okay. But you can see how I'm getting kind of a mixture, and that's what I want. I don't want a line here where it's dark and then light, so I'm going to kind of come in here and just tap a few. See how fast this goes? Cause, and I'm using this little number four filbert. If anybody has any questions as we go, let me know. I'll try to keep an eye on everything up here to be able to answer your questions. And I'm going to come clear up here and kind of shape my hydrangea right here. Just bring some little petals out there. And this is, like I said, this is so easy because if you do not, you know, get it so that you don't want it to look like a snowball, but you want to have little places where this comes in and out. If you do find that you're doing that, um, concentrate on not doing it or come in with some black paint to give it a little more a ragged edge because that makes it easy. Okay, now look how fast we did that. Now some of this is wet here, so I could come in with my light lavender and I'm going to be picking up the light lavender uh, and picking up the violet pansy. Okay, so look how quick that was. Now it, it looks white because it is uh, wet. But now I would just simply come in and kind of wipe a little bit of that purple off of my brush and I'm going to come in and pick up just a tiny bit of the white and any time you are using a lighter color you always use less. So light means less because you want just those uh, white petals to be the sparkle of your flower. And you want to put a few in here and your white will mix with some of the purple that's already there. And if you feel like you've gotten too much of the colored in there, let it dry, and you could always come back and do uh, a little black in there to open it up. And I'm just coming back in here now and putting a little more purple in here, just because I think it'll look a little better. Okay, so there's our first one. Now, do we want this to dry? We don't have to let it dry because we're going to be starting back over here for our second flower. And we're going to be 
uh, putting our dark back over in here and then we're going to be working up this way the same way that we did with this and so once again now i'm just I, if i've got a little white on my brush i'm going to just wipe it on a dry paper towel don't use water and this is violet pansy again with my number four and i'm just going to work real quickly here and I'm picking up paint pretty frequently because every time you see me go away, I'm picking up paint. And this is the Violet Pansy. Some of these I'm not really even uh, making little flowers out of them because the way you create the little blossoms is by coming in at the end and just putting yellow dots in randomly and that makes it look like you've got those little individual petals that are on hydrangeas. My grandmother used to have two or three of these bushes. She had a pink one and a purple one and she had a white one and oh my gosh we used to go out there um, and pick them and we'd use them to play with when we had our, our baby dolls. We would make hats. Uh, and Grandma was always so uh, nice about letting us raid her hydrangeas. Okay, see, look how fast that went in there. That's just nothing but um, the violet pansy. And I'm going to come up pretty far with that because I want to, this is kind of over to the side and it would be more in the shadows if my light were coming in from the upper left corner. Again, I'm and going along the edges and kind of getting away from that snowball round. Okay, so now I, without cleaning my brush, I'm going to start with the lavender. And again, uh, the lavender is a little bit lighter, so I'm going to use it with some of my Violet Pansy. And I'm just going to work my way right up into my flower up in here. And let me get a little more out. Violet Pansy's always been one of my favorite colors. It's it's just, it's got a lot of red in it. And I just always love the uh, brightness of it. Now I'm going to pick up some of my light lavender and come in here and start just tapping in. Tap, tap, tap and dab. It's one of my favorite ways to paint. You gals know that. See, now I just have to fill this in. And I'm going to come over here with a little bit of my lighter color. If you don't have the e-packet for this and you'd like to have it um, it's available on my website it's a Facebook live special it's only ten dollars and I'm still trying to figure out and Sandy McTeer is going to help me uh, get my this video uploaded to my YouTube channel there's a learning curve with this and so I'm just tapping around. Okay, so now you can see that it looks like two flowers here. And so the way that you separate it is with contrast. So I'm going to come into my white and come up here 
and put in my top highlight petals up here, which will divide those two flowers. In order to uh, show space, you have to have contrast, light and dark. Okay, and I think that I was just looking here, and I think that for me to put my third one here, I'm going to come back and I'm going to put a little dark over in here. Just simply so that when I come in and put in this third one, um, I will have a dark side to come up against. And I might let that dry a little bit. Okay, so let me check on here. And just make sure I've got enough petals in here. And the great thing about this is, even after you get your first uh, painting on here, if you decide you want to put more petals on, you can. Okay. So now for the third one, um, I'm going to put out a little bit of fresh foliage and a little bit of my rose pink because I think you can see in here, let me get this right here. You can see I've got a little bit of lavender, a little bit of pink, and it just makes a nice contrast. So again, putting out just a tiny bit because we don't need that much. Ooh, boy, that's bright. Sorry about that. Okay, do I need to wash my brush? No. And let's see, I've got, I, I didn't mark this down in here, so anytime you don't, you can always take your trusty chalk pencil and come in there. Now I think I'm going to start with my um, fresh foliage down in here first. Oops, let me get on the camera a little better. Okay, let me go out, or cut go out just a little oh that's coming in there that's better it looks white there but it's actually green okay there you can see it's green but there we go I think that's better okay still learning how to maneuver okay so I'm gonna start with again with my little taps and I can come in and pick up a little bit of white and come in to uh, just give my petals a little highlight. I want, don't want them super green, but I want some of them green. And again, I can get my three little petals with one load of paint. And what I like, it, see, I can come up now over this other petal. And this, this blossom is on top of the other two. Um, I might have to go dry that, but you know, if that picks up a little bit of of the lavender, the the uh, fresh foliage, that's fine too. I'm just getting the shape here now. And just kind of coming out here so I don't have a round ball and I'm going right up. Don't be afraid to paint over something. I know that when you've worked hard to actually paint something, it's uh, it's kind of hard to go back and paint over it to give it a uh, dimensional look, but that's what you have to do. And 
I don't want to have great big spaces in here, but I just want to use that as my background. Okay, now that's kind of square across the top. So I just put a few more in there. And I've got, let me put out a little bit of the rose pink. And I'll put a little bit of it in there also. And of course, when I get it out, I've got it all over my hands, which is normal. See how I can just come in with a little bit of the rose pink and white and just kind of dibby dab. New term, dibby dab. Okay, so now those are painted and I'm not liking that. See how that dips there? Uh-uh, that, that puppy ain't going to work. So I'm going to come in with a little bit of my lavender. Didn't wash my brush. And just came in here to kind of bring that up like that to give it a nicer shape. All righty. So now I'm finished with my, let me turn that so you can see. Yeah, it's, it doesn't glare quite as much. But I do notice one thing. See how I've got this straight line across here? I don't like that. So I'm just going to come down in here and kind of add a few light little petals. I've got a straight line here too. I've fought this my entire painting career to not have everything lined up like we're a, a army regiment on parade. So I'm just coming in here to kind of break that, break that line up. Or I could come in with some of my dark and come up into here to break it up, whichever way. Okay, so I need to rinse my brush. Any questions? Uh, thank you, everybody. Any questions about a quick, easy way to do hydrangeas? A number four or number six filbert brush and a couple of colors of paint. So, all right, now we're gonna do leaves. And the large leaves are the ones uh, down in here. And really, uh, you can kind of determine what size brush you're going to use by how much room you have left in there. And let's see, two fingers, two fingers. Hmm. So I have just about the same size on this one as I do on this one because every time you do a painting it's a little bit different. So I'm going to use some Italian sage and some thicket and the reason that I uh, chose these colors is because I wanted a little more gray down in there and the Italian sage is green with a lot of gray and so let me get that out. Now, here's where you would determine if you're heavy-handed or light-handed. And what do I mean by that? Well, some of us have a death grip on our brushes, and we press down so hard that we make everything bigger because we have a death grip and we're pushing down hard. Some other of us are a little lighter-handed, and so we don't press down as hard, so we need a bigger brush. Does that kind of make sense? I hope so. Um, and as far as a brush for this, you can either use a half inch flat, or if you like to use an angle brush to uh, paint leaves or anything, again, use whatever brush you need to um, in order to get the shape of leaves that you want. And I think just for a little bit of a challenge, I will use a, an angle brush tonight. This is a half inch. And let's see, I'm gonna be going like this, and I want my lighter color on this leaf on the outside. So see, with my angle brush, the toe of the brush is going to be down here and I'm going to come up 
like this. So I would want the lighter color on what is called the heel. And I always have to figure that out. So I'm not really going, I'm just going to load uh, the, these two and just kind of dab a little bit. Just enough so that I have two colors on my brush. And I've got my little marking right here. I think you can see that. Okay. And so I'm going to come in here. I'm going to touch, push down, and stand up so easy and now on this one I'm going to touch come around and again stand up look how the nice colors I got on that because this time the dark green was on the outside which gave me automatic shading down here and light up here who knew okay so let's do another one and again, I'm coming in here and just kind of uh, doing a dab load here. And so this time on this leaf right here, oops, let me get it over here. You see I'm going to come this way and kind of wiggle a little bit so I would want to have my uh, the light color again on the heel. I hope I'm making sense with this. Okay, so I would start here and then just kind of wiggle down and then come right out. And then because I'm going to change the angle of my surface, I always want to turn it so that it is easy for me or comfortable for me to make the uh, proper stroke. So this time I'm just going to work it down like this and pull out. Oops, I've got a little bit of an opening there. But look how easy that leaf came out. Super simple. Okay, so there's two. And I'm going to come in. And again, I kind of, on the black background, I kind of like the light edge to be on the outside. But because this is light here, now I would like to have some contrast and have the dark there. So I'm simply going to take a dry paper towel and wipe this off. I don't have to rinse it in water. Please don't. Uh... Okay, and you said getting those point to join at the end are my downfall. Well, as soon as I do this one, I'll show you how we can make that always work for you. Now, see, this time, because I'm going to come down this way and I want dark here, I'm going to put the dark green on the heel and put the light green on the toe. And just kind of come in here and get that. So now I'm, I'm going to go off of the canvas with this leaf so all I have to do is just come down and come off, just like that. And then turn my brush over, and I'm turning my surface. And I'm just going to come down and just act like I'm going off. And see, now the point of the leaf is off of the canvas. Super, super simple. Now we have one where, um, let's see, we're going to come up here with this one. So our dark needs to be on the heel. So once again, an angle brush will always help you get a nice point on your leaves. And I mean, I learned to paint with a flat brush. 
but boy, this really does help. So this leaf is kind of off the canvas too, so I'm going to start off and then and watch. Just There's my nice tip. Look how that easy that is. And then I'm going to turn it over so that my heel is on the outside. And then I'm just going to come in and watch. Just look how that just made the point so easy. And I need to go back over this one. I, it, it needed a little more paint in there. Another thing, I a little tip I want to give you about painting on a little bit rougher canvas like this is, or if you're in a linen uh, canvas and the paint is not filling up your area, you need to slow down with your stroke. And that will give the paint a chance to get down in the little fibers. Okay, so let's see. I have one more over here. And I really don't have room on this one for it, but let's see what we can do. And if it doesn't work out, I'll just, um, I'll just paint over it again with black after it dries. Okay, so let's just come in here and let me come this way. Just like that. Okay. Now, uh, to put my stem in, I'm going to take a, a little script liner. And you can see that I put like a little uh, open area there. So I'm just going to, uh, again, with, I'm not using water unless I have to. This is, I'm just picking up some green, uh, light green and dark green on this. And then I'm gonna come in and just draw some like little spider places there and then just kind of take that down and this looks like this needs to have a stem coming down from it and then I can come in with whatever color I need for the stem of my leaves to show up oops I'm off camera and so on most of these I need the darker green I'm going to bring that down there like this, this uh, comes down there and then bring this in and bring this in. Okay, so there are your hydrangeas all painted and our leaves are in. And before we add the little yellow dots in here for to form the blossoms, we would want to let this dry. So this will dry perfectly while we're over here doing our, um, our next five petal flowers. And for the five petal flowers, you can use, before we go, any questions about anything? Okay, if you do have some, why? let me know. Um, you can do, use either a half inch or quarter inch. I've got a quarter inch here too. So um, whatever size you need to do, um, whichever is best. And you'll see here on page four of your student handout, um, when we're doing, we're going to be doing some front-facing petals, uh, flowers, and we're going to do some side view. And what's really important when you're going to do a side view is you need to paint the back petals first. And that's why in your handout, I've numbered the order in which you do this. I forgot the number four there, but I think you get it. You're going to put one, two, and three here first. And then on this one, one and two are going to go first. 
and we're going to be using our fresh foliage and white with a little bit of the rose pink and you can kind of decide that yourself which you want to use and I think I'm going to use this smaller brush and I don't want to, uh, I want to have two colors on there, but um, they don't have to be exact. And I want the white to kind of come out on the outside edge. So I came in here and I marked where my first three petals are going to go. So in order to do a uh, five petal flower, I'm simply going to start here and end up over here. And let me see if I can come in a little closer uh, there. Okay, now let me get everything in line. There we go. Okay. I'm going to come in and just kind of paint across. Press down and paint. It doesn't have to be exactly the exact shape of a petal it's just kind of the look of a petal same thing here if you need to mark it just kind of put a couple little marks there press down and just make your petal and same thing over here press down and make your petal it doesn't really have to be a specific shape I'm just and if you need to go over it again with your uh, second layer of paint why do that and now i'm going to paint the back two petals in my other uh, flower here and this time i'm going to load some pink on the green side and white and i'm just going to kind of uh, uh, brush that out a little bit Okay, and I always, I'm going to put, um, I think I'm going to put the, the pink on the outside edge this time. So I'm going to do two of them. So I'm just going to paint that petal and then come over here and just paint that petal just like that. And so now those have to dry. So while those are drying, I have a petal here, or a flower here, that is a straight on flower. And it's going to be green and white. So I can uh, paint that while uh, the others are drying. And all I did in order to paint this flower is, see I just marked a circle. I'm gonna go around that circle and I think I'm going to do that with the green and white. So I'm going to wipe off my pink here. And again, pick up the green and white paint. Just kind of messy. It's almost like a dirty load. And I'm going to start here. And I, if I want to mark where that petal is, I just go there. And then... You know when I do my uh, five petals in mudding, I just come and put them here and here and make an upside down Y. And then um, I can come here and just simply fill in. And that makes an easy, easy petal. Now I've got some black showing through there so I'm going to go back over that and you can go back and shape the petals and if they're not the exact shape that you want you can come back with your black and paint that in so now I'm going to let this dry uh, because I've got to put in my petals over here so since I'm doing, uh, since these have dried now, I can come in, and again, I'm using my green and white, 
and remember what I need to do in order to see layers is I need to have contrast. So since I've got so much white here, in order to show contrast, I'm going to put the green there on the outside so that the green will be over the white. I need a little more there and come down here. And I want these all to come because my growth point is right there. And then you can see I'll come in and put in a center and a stem. So for this flower here, I will use the pink and white. And because I've got so much pink showing here, I'm going to want the white to be up there. So I'm going to paint here and here and then put a little one there. And again, my growth point is right there. You can see these are not just perfect flowers because I'm going to come in with stems and let's put in a bud um, right here. And all I'm going to do is push down and stand up. And there's a little pink bud there. Uh, I've got another little bud right here. And I'm just going to make a real little tiny one there. Okay. So uh, I would need to let this dry so that I could come here and put another flower down here. So um, I think while those are drying, I'll go ahead and put in some leaves. So uh, again, I'm just taking my brush, not using water and just cleaning it. And I'm gonna come in to my two colors of green again, the light and the dark. And the first thing I'm going to do is put in some stems. I'm going to stay on the chisel edge, or you could use a liner brush, whatever you want. So I'm just kind of lining the, uh, connecting everything. And I know that I'm going to put a line of leaves along there. So I'm putting a stem there, stem there. This one is going to kind of go behind there, but what I want to do, I want to show a calyx. So I'm just going to kind of tap some green in there so that it looks like there's something connecting there, even though it's behind this petal right here. Okay, so uh, for leaves, leaves are, uh, you can do leaves with either a filbert or a flat. Uh, let me show you how to do leaves with a filbert because it makes the, them very easy. So if I were to come in here with my filbert brush and just kind of had two colors, all I'd have to do in order to do this is simply push down and stand up. Push down and stand up. Makes it super easy. Gives you that nice, oops, I'm off camera here. Woo, where am I? Oops, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so I would just push down and stand up. And look what a great leaf I get. Now, you usually can't pull stems in with a filbert because it's it really doesn't have a chisel edge, but you could use a liner brush. But look how easy that is to do a little leaf just with a filbert. Okay, so I'll use that to come in and do a few leaves here. And let me get this up a little bit here. So I'm going to start out here. And I need a little bit more light on there. Look how easy those go on there. And then I'll come back in with my uh, liner brush in order 
to have the stems in there. And if, they're, if they get too, now here on my silver, I need a little bit darker. And here I want to put a calyx, so I would just simply come up on each side and put a little tiny one right there in the middle. I came right in here and did that. I'm sorry, I was off camera. When I'm up close like this, it's um, a little bit harder to stay on camera. I'll get used to it, girls. Hang in there with me. Okay, and we've got the same thing here. We're going to have a little calyx. Let's put a leaf there. Another le little leaf here. And then I can grab my uh, liner with my dark and come in and put the stems in. And I even got room there to make that look like there's a stem there. Okay, so now I need to put a another flower down here. And so I'm going to use my uh, quarter inch again. And what color am I going to use this time? I'm going to use mostly white with green. It might have a little bit of pink in it. Or if you wanted, you could even pick up a little bit of the lavender. Nothing to say that you can't have a lavender flower in here. So this is going to go off of the canvas also. So I'm coming in and mainly just going to put in maybe three petals. And what I want to do is come in with some white and paint the centers here and here because I'm going to come back and do yellow. So uh, while that's drying, I'll put a few more leaves in here. And let's bring this out. And now this time I'm using my flat brush. And this is with the Italian Sage and Thicket. And see, I can come in and simply put, uh, just touch, push down, and slide. That's all you need to do. No fancy turning of the wrist or anything else. So we've got some, and we've got some leaves coming up here also. So... I don't like this not having a point, so I'm going to come there and put a little bit over that. Come in here again. And I think that just about does what we need to do for those down there. Let me see. I want to make sure that this is nice and white in here. Because we're going to come and put some yellow light in there. Just get out a little bit. And I think that I am going to use my filbert brush to paint that in. Um, I wanted to put a little bit of a center showing right here. So I could just tap a little bit of yellow around that petal and I've come up too close there but I can come in here now and tap my center and this is with the filbert this would be better if it were dry, uh, totally dry but I think you get the idea and then you can put little um, veins out from these with burnt sienna and uh, that's this color and I'm going to use my liner brush and a little water and make it kind of uh, thinned a little bit thinned and in order to do that you simply come in with a little water and make a 
kind of a soupy, thinned mixture there. And one important thing is when you are actually filling your, your brush, as you touch in it, twist it as you turn out, and that's going to give you a nice sharp point. And then you're just simply going to come in and pull and pick up more if you need it. Oops, that's too much. But you can always go back in. This is what, um, let me see if I've got this here. Trusty little Q-tip. And the reason that was too big was because I didn't have enough water and I pressed down too hard. So now, where are we at here? Let's go, okay. And we would put those on all of the little petals. It's just a little bit of an accent in order to make them have a little bit more uh, dimension to them. You can also come in and shade across the bottom of your center to kind of raise it up a little bit. And, of course, you could always do tendrils if you wanted to um, with your liner just to, um, you know, make uh, some little swirls. And I need to come in here. I just noticed this. Let's see how this needed a calyx here. So I need to come in here and give that a calyx. Okay, so let's look and let me back off of here a little bit and see, well back off, there we go. Oops, if this is backwards for me, so I have to get, there we go. Okay, back off just a little bit more little bit more. Okay, so the last thing for us to do besides the butterfly is um, come in with, and you can use a liner brush or you can use a dip dotter. And you simply come into your yellow light and you start picking. You want to make sure the water's all out of your liner. In fact, let me grab my I love these things, the little uh, daughters. They're wonderful. You can get them at brushes and more. And you just come in and tap one of these in there and then start dotting. Uh, where it looks like you think that you want to create a blossom. See how that how neat that looks and of course these would be uh, wouldn't show up as much down here so after you put as the more you dot the smaller the dots get so once you've done two or three up here and you know you're losing paint on your daughter you could just kind of come down in here and see just give little hints of dots down in there so you can create as many of the little blossoms as you want. Come up in here. I think these little daughters uh, are only uh, like $5.99, but I really like them. And you get two of them. And so that gives you eight different sizes of dots. So see, I'm creating uh, little blossoms just by putting those dots in. And I'll do the same thing here on the green one. We're still using yellow. Now, on the uh, e-packet, 
it do, does show you how you can go in and paint a butterfly and it doesn't have to be that one a, a monarch would look beautiful on this one too so see there's our little dots making up our blossoms and I can tell right here sorry I'm changing the subjects okay so there um, there's our yellow dots in there to create our blossoms uh, you could always come in and make any kind of butterfly that you want, but uh, I, like I said, I found these little butterflies at the dollar and a quarter store. <laughs> and I used my stencil brush to just make that. I just went in and, and tapped on that with the white and the pink. Probably should have put some purple on it too but you could just glue that there and look how cute that looks. And plus that, then you don't have to paint a butterfly. <laughs> but anyway, um, so it's just, this just makes a really nice, easy uh, composition and to create uh, a simple project where you're using stencils to fill up an area simple hydrangeas and then some little five petal flowers so um are there any questions oh uh julie uh juliana likes the green one yeah i do too and that's the great thing about hydrangeas is you can make them any color that you want and um so it's, uh, you know, it just, it depends on what colors you have. You could make pink and white ones, purple and white ones, uh, any kind. So uh, are there any other questions? If you have some questions before we go, why, uh, I'll be happy to answer them for you. Let me show you what I painted here. You can see it. And um, this could be, the great thing about this is this is a 9 by 12, but you could take it down to a 8 by 10 or a 5 by 7 and make it smaller. And by learning how to do really quick hydrangeas, um, you can do them on cards or anything. They're, they're just a really fun uh, flower to paint. So, uh, that concludes our class. Remember, if you uh, want to sign up for uh, the class coming up next week, uh, all you have to do is go to my website and register for the class. And um, we have so much fun. We have a lot of giggles. We do a lot of, of uh, crazy things. Uh, cowbells and all, but I hope you'll come back again and join me for another live online class uh, uh, on Zoom, but also here on Facebook Live. And what I'm going to try to do is do one painting live and one mudding live each month. So I hope you'll come back and join me. And so until I see you Next time, have a wonderful day and bye for now.